we have a fun one today. This. Oh. Docker running Mac OS. This is a fun one. I think you can do this in Windows. You can do it in Linux. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm running, I think, a, a Debian version of Linux, but you can do this on any version. Obviously, this person did it on Arch. And we're going to just take Docker and install Mac. Uh, as this was a fun project that got sent to me on Twitter, I was like, oh, I'll check that out. So scrolling down, of course, I made a little cheat sheet, uh, which... Is should be a copy and paste. I, I ran this on my laptop, get everything going, and then just kind of documented the process. So we're going to take this cheat sheet and go ahead and install it. Let's not waste any time. We're going to copy this first one to install Docker. We'll launch our terminal. We're going to paste it all in here. Let's look at our code. It looks like we're just doing a couple dependencies. We're installing a GPG key so we could add a repository for Docker Jammy Stable. Uh, I think we're going to actually have to change this one because this isn't Ubuntu. Let's do a Neo fetch because sometimes I forget what distro I'm on. I'm actually on Debian SID. So let's uh, pull up Docker and change this line. So we're going to just change this from Debian. Uh, and this is going to be Buster. This one should just be Debian for the GPG. Everything else looks pretty good here. So now let's copy this. Come back into our console, relaunch, paste it in, hit enter, and let's see if we messed anything up. Oh, I don't think that's actually looking pretty good. It says we can't find that one. Let's just do an update. Looks like we have quite a few packages to update, but we're going to try it again. Yeah, that time I got it. So I just needed to do an apt and update and then do the Docker CE. This should pull it directly from that repository we just added. And then we also needed to add our current user to the Docker group. So we're going to just do that. So if we look at our groups right now, you can see we are part of all these groups. Docker is not there. So we will just simply log out and then log back in. And then we'll launch back in. Let's see, groups. And there's Docker. Perfect. So now Docker's installed. We're part of the Docker group. You can also have rebooted here. I just preferred to log out, log back in a little faster. So this first part's done. Docker's installed. Next part, portainer. Uh, this is a really neat one. So we're gonna actually break this up into different commands. We're gonna first use Docker to create a volume. So we'll come back over here, paste it in. This is just creating the portainer data. This is an optional part. But it's something that if I want to get, a, get you familiar with Docker a little bit on, on Linux or Windows, honestly, running Portainer just makes it so easy to work with. And if you're interested in a separate video specifically on Portainer, let me know in the comments. Uh, so we've created that volume. Next, we're going to actually do a Docker run. Now, Docker run doesn't take an existing Docker container and run it, as the command would suggest. It actually runs an image from online, it downloads an image and then creates a container for all this data to reside. So that's what this command does right here. Copy it, paste it in, and that's it. So there's a couple things with this command as it does its thing. It's creating a port uh, container on this port 8000 and also on the port 9443. And it's naming the container portainer. Now, what this does, if we open up localhost 443, in advance, proceed, we have a whole new setup. Now, change your username from admin to something better than admin. And then uh, you need an eight-digit password. We're going to create this. Uh, you can add extra environments if you want to emulate certain things. I just say, hey, use my current one. I don't care. Just get started. And then we're going to click local containers. This is all the containers we have right here. This portainer is pretty much set up. So this is a good way to kind of monitor any Docker containers we have. Because using just the CLI for Docker is easy, but it doesn't give you a lot of information where portainer just says, here's everything. So now the meat and potatoes, the time we've all been waiting for, Mac OS Docker setup. Uh, this is a fun one. We're going to install Monterey today, so we'll copy this. So now we come over here, we paste our install command. This is going to go out, grab the entire image, the Monterey image. It's going to launch it into a direct image on our hard drive. 
and then we're going to set up Mac OS as you would if you went out and bought a Mac. This is pretty darn cool. My hat is off to sick codes for setting this up because damn, is it cool. All right, and now we've got it downloaded. We've launched into the container. That only took about 90 seconds for the download and launch, which is kind of insane. On my laptop, I was using a Wi-Fi connection on like a public Wi-Fi. It took almost an hour. So timing will vary greatly depending on your download connection and how fast the local PC is, since this is a desktop, obviously. Not much problems. We're gonna move this into its own workspace. And this is what we have. We can go full screen with it over here. And we're gonna launch into, as if we were setting up Monterey Mac OS. So here is our setup screen. We're just gonna go into disk utility because we need to set this up for Mac OS to install. Again, this is a virtualized environment. We're not actually wiping out any disk drives here like you normally would do on an install. We're just gonna go through QAMU, that's a 400 meg. And here's a 274 gigabyte drive so this isn't an actual drive this is a virtual drive it could take up to 274 gigs but for today typically these images are between 10 and 20 gigs so we'll hit erase okay and with that done we have the mac os base system ready uh the drive of that was just virtual and we will click the red x and now we can install monterey we'll hit continue agree to their license and then we select our virtual disk we just created and hit continue as well. This is gonna go out, install all this, go grab a cup of coffee. It's not gonna take two hours on this system, but it's definitely gonna take probably 30 minutes, I'd say. I'm gonna clock it and tell you how long it is. All right, and now we finished the install. It's rebooted a couple times. Typically you go through that initial one, it'll reboot and then it'll probably be another 30 minutes or actually in my case is about 10 to 15 minutes. And this should be the very first boot we're seeing now. And here we are, we have our Mac OS. So let's just fill out these questions real quick. Now we'll just do our simple setup. And we are in on the desktop and now we can start tinkering around with it. Now, obviously we have some more stuff to do here. And here is Portainer where we have Elastic Allen with the doc, uh, Docker OS X Monterey. You could also do this via command line as well, where you could just do a PS. Let's just launch a new and you can go Docker PS. This shows running commands. If we do a Docker PS dash A, this shows all of the commands. So if this is shut down, you can still look up like the container ID. The big thing is the name right here, Elastic Allen. We need to remember that because then you can just Docker start and then the name to start it uh, through command line. Uh, so those are two really big commands or you could just use Portainer like I do. It's really simple to see what's going on with your container that way. And then finally, optimizing the container. Now, normally I would just do a sudo su and then just copy all these commands, paste it in there. This is more for a dev environment. It reduces motion, auto logs in, sets performance mode on, and then just makes a lot of tweaks, turns off spotlight indexing. So it's not gonna sit there and kill your performance while you're in a virtual machine. And that's what all of this does. So you can just copy this and then just paste it into your terminal, uh, the command directly into here. If you wanna know where I got all these commands from and you wanna do them line by line so you understand what you're doing with the optimization, all this is also from a different repository from Sick Codes that created the Docker container. And you can see all the commands that I'm using right here. So if we look, the biggest one is this right here, disabling spotlight indexer will save you so much time. Uh, let's paste that in. Indexing would be disabled. So then when you're launching systems like Finder will take a long time usually if you have indexer on. Right now it's just popping up. You have actually pretty good performance out of this Docker container and there's an IMG file located in the var directory in your host system. So on the host system, if you do want to see this in the var lib Docker container, and if we blow that up just a bit to find this image file, I would just locate to this directory or you could just do a find. I'm just gonna say the current directory because we're in var lib docker or you could manually type out all of that. 
Uh, let's go by size and we're just going to go above 10 gig. And then it spits out those big files that are located in Docker. And you can say, okay, we see two big files here. What are they? This is a merge file and this is the diff. So this right here at the very top is the one we want. This is the full image file. We could take this, we could put it in vert manager. We could do whatever we want with it. Take it to another system, develop on that one, send different commands to it. The sky is the limit, but having this here gives a lot for like developers of Mac OS that don't necessarily have a Mac or want to do a lot of tinkering around. This is the perfect scenario because you can just launch as many of these containers. You can clone them. You can do anything you want, pass specific system environmental variables to them. The sky is the limit. Let me know what you're going to be doing with this Docker container down in the comment section. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.